Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is the podcast for you. And welcome to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown, and you're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, where we do our darndest to find you things to think about when you think about real estate beyond that traditional formula on HGTV of, oh, we looked at three houses and bought one because real estate is so much more than that. In fact, there's a giant focus right now in the entire profession on safety and not just the safety of realtors, but the safety of consumers because frankly, all the world is slightly unhinged these days. So as a special guest, I've got Angela Shields. Angela is currently the CEO of the Tennessee Realtors. Angela, thank you for joining us on the podcast. Thank you, Lee. It's a pleasure to be here. So give our listeners a little bit of your background so they'll know what does the CEO of the Tennessee Realtors do? Do you sell houses? Give them something to know what your role actually is, because we do have a pretty interesting audience for the podcast where not everybody is a realtor. We have a lot of normal consumers who are kind of fascinated by our business listening in as well. So as you said, I am the CEO for Tennessee Realtors, and my job is to represent the state of Tennessee and the realtors that serve in Tennessee. We have approximately 28,000 realtors that work all across the state, and we have 21 local associations. So our job is to support all of the realtors. And let me say that not every real estate agent is a realtor. So they actually have to belong to the National Association of Realtors and uh, a local association and state association. So it's real important that you actually look for a realtor. With that, they hold themselves up to a higher standard. So we make sure that we support all the local associations in their pursuit of making sure that everyone abides by the code of ethics. 17 articles that everyone holds themselves to. We do a lot of legislative work to protect private property rights. We are always watching out for the consumer. We do a lot to educate that both the consumer, our realtors, it's just endless and endless. We could spend your entire podcast just talking about what the Realtor Association does. So I'll I'll stop at that point. But we do a lot of work that I encourage everyone to educate themselves on. Especially if you're a realtor listening to this who grumps on occasion about the dues that you pay for your association. Frankly, if you're grumping about it, you probably don't have the foggiest idea how much is going on. So make a phone call or shoot me a note at Twitter and I will be glad to hook you up with somebody who can tell you locally what's happening in your world. So with that being said, Angela, I mentioned that we're going to talk about realtor safety a little bit because in your years of experience in helping the public have good realtors and helping realtors become better realtors, you've seen some really crazy things because unlike those of us that sell houses, you actually get to see a whole lot more realtors than we do. We just see the crazy public. Right. And realtor safety is one of the things that we spend a lot of time in our education on the local level, national level, and of course on the state level. Realtor safety is something I think that a lot of times goes unconsidered, especially by the consumer, but it's so important not only to the realtor, but also for the consumer as well, because a lot of times a realtor is coming into contact with so many people throughout their career. And, you know, in today's world, it's so important to know with whom you're doing business, both for the consumer and for the realtor, because it's just, you just never know. Uh, You hear things all the time in the news and you just never know what could happen on a day-to-day basis. I've personally seen, unfortunately, cases that prove that. And over my career, it's just, um, it's unfortunate how many times that it needs to be emphasized that a realtor does need to be prepared to protect themselves or even a consumer member for that matter. It's just, it's so important. Okay. So tell us about one of your members in one of your past associations where you've served who found themselves in need of protection. So a case where it was actually a member that was in trouble. I had the opportunity to serve almost eight years in San Antonio, Texas as the CEO of the San Antonio Association. And I had a member, one of the worst calls you can ever get is to receive that call that we've had a realtor who's been attacked. It's almost like when you receive a a call that you've had a child 
child that has been injured or a spouse or a family member. It, it's awful. We had a lady who was showing a house. And in this particular case, it was someone who a, a trusted friend had it, um, had referred this person to her. So she felt like it was somebody that she could trust that was coming to her that was well known. She had taken this person to see a couple of houses. And when she got to this particular house, it was in a very upscale neighborhood, large house. It was a vacant property. And the individual started going through the home and and disappeared and had gone apparently to check out the attic space. When he came down, he had a pipe in his hand and he hit her over the head with this pipe. She tried to take off running. He went after her planning to hit her again, and she made it outside. Fortunately for her, she had been a airline stewardess before and had had training on safety. All of that kicked in for her, and she was about to pass out but kept trying to keep herself alert. She made it to the front porch where he stood over her, And as she tells the story, she had several vehicles that she was trying to flag down, but no one would stop for her as she stood there because she had the blood running down her face. She actually was able to run from him again and started going toward trying to get to the car. He was demanding to get into his car as he kept trying to hit her again. Finally, to make a long story short, she made a break for it running toward the road A group of five teenagers who had been in that particular neighborhood longboarding saw her and they were the only car that would stop for her. They threw her in their car, which she said she had to lay basically across their laps, and they took off. He jumped in his car, took off after them, and it became a car chase. And as they were going down the road, they happened to see a police officer that was pulled off the side of the road. They pulled up beside, got her out of the car where she was basically passed out and was able to explain the story. He took off after that car because he did see the car and he was able to catch them. In the trunk of the car, he had all of the makings that they believed his intention to tie her up, put her in the trunk, and kill her. They truly believe that. And then in the trial, that's what he was, it was attempted murder that uh, he is now in jail for. She truly believes those kids saved her life. And she, to this day, calls them her angels. It's a remarkable story that she has. I don't mind telling you her name. She does teach a class now. That was her recovery is that she, after she had time to recuperate from her injuries, she started telling her story and teaching a class on it. Her name is Janice Tisdell, and she was actually featured on 2020 with her story. Remarkable lady. There's so many things in that story that I'd like to point out to our listeners. The first one is, Her background prior to real estate totally had a factor in her survival in real estate. And I think too many times our realtors, when they move into this business, because it's often a second or third career choice, they kind of put on a shelf what they learned in the past and write it off and don't even tell the public, I used to do something else. But here's a situation where if she hadn't been trained as a flight attendant prior, she might not have had the necessary training to survive. So what a cool story to tell going forward of, I'm now a great realtor, but I'm also a survivor because, and I think that's that's a really good thing to think about whether or not you've ever been attacked. But then you think about how sad it is that people wouldn't stop for her. Right. She said that a UPS truck went by and she's waving her arms and flagging, trying to get him to stop. And whether he didn't see her or whether he just didn't take it seriously, he kept going. Or if he's under company orders not to stop. I mean, people are afraid to buck the system in many instances. But we're also in in this year, 2018, and for decades prior, I mean, we say the future is at risk and the teenagers don't care and they don't pay attention. And my goodness, here you have five teenagers Mm -hmm. who knew what the right thing was to do and put themselves at risk to save somebody they didn't know. So she was absolutely right to call them her angels, and I hope that they're still in touch with her. They certainly are. She gets together with them, and she considers them her kids. I mean, they she does stay in touch with them. So another reason not to write off the future generation. They might save you when you've got blood running down your face <laughs> coming through the street. That's right. And also, whenever Janice listens to this, and I'm sure that she will because Realtor World is a pretty fast-moving grapevine, I think it's extraordinary that 
she's willing to tell her story and be so transparent in the hopes of helping somebody else not go through what she's been through. I'm sure that her class is full of tips and advice for taking good precautions when you're dealing with members of the public and public people. This right here is why we ask to see your driver's license. It's why we ask you to meet us in public places before we show you properties. We don't know you. You don't know us. Right. And, you know, I I will say this about realtors as well. Um, One of the things about realtors that I think is so wonderful is they are always giving back. And most all realtors, they give back. They don't ask for anything. Janice is a great example of that because after her attack and after she took just a little small breather to to just take in what happened, Her healing was to tell her story, but she never stopped telling her story. As you know, Lee, uh, local associations, they do new member orientations for their members. And Janice, for years, and I I have no doubt she's still doing this, Janice for years came in every month for the new member orientation, and she taught the safety class. No charge, no, no anything. She just came in and did that because she didn't want what happened to her to happen to any other realtor. And again, I think that's what's so neat about realtors is they're willing to help other realtors, even their competitors, just to make the industry better. Absolutely. And she knows, too, firsthand, you're far more likely to listen to the advice and counsel of a peer than you are to some random instructor, which is why you and I both love bringing active realtors into places of instruction and teaching because the impact is so much greater on making them stronger business people and just smarter overall. Absolutely. So now we've mentioned briefly before that there's also the other side of realtor safety, and that's not very often talked about, and that's that the members of the public don't know the realtor with whom they're engaging either, and that could entail some risk. So What's the case study on this one? Right. So as you mentioned, a lot of times you do hear about the realtor that's being attacked. And and truth be told, that is the what's usually happening if if there's ever a safety story. Rarely is there another side of that. But unfortunately, I have had a case um, in my past where there was a realtor that uh, unfortunately had a mental health issue. In this particular case, it was one of those situations where you almost watched it develop over time, and it became an issue that a consumer ended up having to face, and then we as the association had to face, um, that became dangerous. And it's unfortunate because, again, with a mental health issue, you know, it's, it's sad for the individual having to go through something like that. But it's also it can be dangerous for the ones that are on the other end of that. The individual is no longer in the business and did end up getting treatment for the problem that she had. But, you know, you, you hear stories all the time in the news and you think about where that could have gone. Fortunately, in our case, it didn't go as far as it could have, but it's scary. And I think it's that's why it's so important that consumers do respect when they hear the realtor, they're asking you to come to their office. They're asking you to be pre-qualified or ask, answer questions or what have you. A lot of times the brokers have things in place, not only so it protects the realtor, but it also protects you as the consumer. So the broker knows who their agents are out with or who the agent is working with. It works both ways. It keeps everybody safe. Well, and the reality there is we have a constant conversation about licensure. And it's in all 50 states where we have this conversation about the barrier to entry to real estate is very low. So there's not a lot of capacity on the behalf of state regulatory bodies to do mental health checks. And we all know in the society that we're in, there's not a ton of resources out there for people who have been diagnosed. But our job as fellow realtors and as leaders in association life is, frankly, realtor friends, if you see something, say something. If somebody's unhinged and saying things that are dangerous, they're acting in a way that's dangerous to themselves or the public, tell the broker. Tell somebody so that questions could be asked, not that you want to assume anybody's got 
issues they don't have. But if there's something that we all need to be aware of to protect the public, it's your duty to make sure that you've had a conversation. And this also means if you're a member of the public and you've had contact with a realtor that doesn't seem right, call that person's broker. I mean, as a broker myself, it would be a very weird call to get and a very weird conversation to have. But if one of my agents needs professional help, I need to know that so that I could do whatever is reasonable to help them in that path. The mental health that's caused so many things in the last several years, we're at least finally seeing some relief on the federal and state side as far as resources. So we've got to help our fellow humans get resources if they need them. Right. And I think it's important that people understand that there's a difference between I've had a bad experience with someone and that person had a bad day or I just don't like that person versus this person is threatening harm or is seeing things that aren't there. And that's basically in in this particular case, we had we had voicemails of tapes and tapes and tapes of um, hallucinations and threats where people were going to be harmed and such. And um, like you said, from the time of that that occurred to the time of today, I think things have changed a lot because unfortunately back then, I don't think we knew as much as we know today. Again, those procedures are there because we're trying to protect everyone and not to make it inconvenience for anyone. So if you're a realtor listening to this and feeling a little sick on your stomach because maybe you haven't taken good safety precautions, there's no time like the present to start having good policies in your office So you may have a code word where you could call and alert a colleague that you're having a dangerous situation. You should always let somebody know where you're out showing property and with whom, which is why one of our policies as a broker is to get copies of driver's licenses. I mean, frankly, you need it at Walmart to use your credit card. So there's no reason somebody shouldn't let you see their ID before you let them in the home where somebody else lays their head down to rest. And if you're a consumer, it's perfectly acceptable and actually very reasonable to ask your realtor to see their pocket card, see their license, check them on the state real estate commission site and see if there's any complaints that are lodged. Just do a little research on your own. Those of us that are so passionate about protecting our profession, we welcome you using the available resources to verify and ask questions so that we can all stay safe while we help make sure your real estate needs are handled in a professional and as little stress as possible way. Angela, thank you for all that you do on behalf of the realtors in your world and on behalf of all the other realtors that you willingly serve through your volunteer life. It is much appreciated. We appreciate you, Lee. Thank you. All right. If you're listening to this episode and you've got another story we need to tell, send me a tweet at Lee Brown on Twitter or any of the social networks especially if you're a broker, investor, inspector, lender, or a normal, regular person who lived through a real estate experience, we'd love to tell it. Subscribe for more episodes. And until then, we'll see you next time. If you are listening to this episode and you need to tell us something about your crazy life in or around real estate, then tweet me at Lee Brown or reach me on any of the social networks. That's if you're a broker, realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular normal human being who happens to have dealt in real estate. Subscribe for more episodes. And as always, we are thrilled that you joined us for some crazy shit in real estate. See you next time.